Welcome back to Let's Go to the Movies with Pat. I'm Pat Patton, general manager here at Ocean Shore Cinemas, and this week I bring you a review of Air, According to Legend, some highlights from our open mic comedy night, our questions of the week, and how we get our movies, and the, the technology and how it's come this far. So sit back, grab your snacks, and enjoy the show. This week, opening up, we have Air, According to Legend, the Nike story on how Nike recruited Michael Jordan to their team. Now, this movie does not actually show Michael Jordan in the movie, except for a few of the side profiles and maybe the back of his head, but that doesn't take away from the movie at all. Actually, it helps you to not realize that Michael Jordan isn't actually Michael Jordan, so it does help the movie move along. And Michael Jordan didn't want anything to do with Nike until Matt Damon's character, Sonny Vaccaro, visited his family and convinced his mom to come over to Oregon and meet with Nike. Well, we all know what happened in the end, and Michael Jordan does sign up with Nike, but don't deter you from coming to the movie. It's a great movie. There's lots of nostalgia from the 80s. If you're an 80s kid like me, you're going to love the music. You're going to love the outfits and everything that comes along with it. The story is a great story. Lots of did you know that and things I didn't even know happened within Nike. Come on down and enjoy the movie. We are only having it for one week. It will be showing until April 27th. So come on down and enjoy. 1984 has been a tough year. Our sales are down. Our growth is down. Sonny, I brought you in here to grow the basketball business. People don't know what the hell a Nike is. What's a Converse? NBA All-Star Shoe. There's nothing cool about Nike. My name's Sonny Vaccaro, I'm with Nike. Do you typically make it a habit of showing up at people's front doors unannounced? I don't like to take no for an answer. Oh man, here we go. You ask me what I do here, this is what I do. I find you players and I feel it this time. The plan. We build a shoe line around just him. I need the greatest basketball shoe that's ever been made. Who's the player? Michael Jordan. You'll motor in. You have our attention. We'll be alright tonight. You show up at the house. I believe in your son. I believe he's the future. And his story is going to make us want to fly. But a shoe is just a shoe. Until my son steps into it. For this week's trivia question, we're going back to air. If you can tell me which college Michael Jordan played for and who the head coach of that basketball team was, you will receive a ticket to our May 3rd stand-up comedy night for our 9 o'clock show. So, if you have the answer to those two questions, email me at oceanshorecinema at gmail.com with the title of Trivia Question of the Week. Starting this Friday, we have Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, the adaptation from Judy Bloom's book. Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. I'm here to speak to you today about your changing body. The blood is released through the vagina. Please, just do this one thing for me. Let me just be normal and regular like everybody else. Just please, 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 please. What I feel, I can't say. I've decided I want you to join my secret club. If you want to be in the club, then you have to wear a bra. Oh. Do you, you think you need one? Are you okay? You can tell me the truth. Ah! Fine, good, yes. We have the Campus Improvement Committee. Any volunteers? Social Committee. Fundraising Committee. <sighs> and how are you? I read that when you don't have any loved ones around, your life expectancy drops drastically, but you know, I've had a good run. <sighs> all the time, doesn't it? Do you think any of us will look like that when we're 19? We must! We must! We must increase our... Sticking around for another week, we have the record-breaking animated movie Super Mario Brothers. Let's take a look. Behold, the king of the Koopas! Open the gates! 
I finally found it. Now who's gonna stop me? That one's perfectly fine. Come on, Mario! Mushroom Kingdom, here we come! It's sticking around for its last week. Playing until Thursday, April 27th, we have Dungeons and Dragons. Check it out. Here's the thing. We're a team of thieves. Then when you do this, you're bound to make enemies. Sometimes those enemies come looking for revenge. Truth be told, we helped the wrong person steal the wrong thing. We didn't mean to unleash the greatest evil the world has ever known. But we're gonna fix it. So how do we pull that off? Uh... Figure it out over a drink? Probably best. You need cool To give us a fighting chance, we're gonna need strength. You got this, right? I know you don't. We also need courage, Back to school and magic, and you. What is that again? It's an owl there. Last week, April 19th, we had our first ever open mic comedy night. We had a great evening. Several comedians came out from all over the area. We had a good laugh, good time, great audience, and we can't wait for the next one. So keep an eye out on our Facebook page and our website for the next open mic comedy night. And here's a few highlights from last week. And I'm with my friend, and we get this table that's close to the bar, and you can look like right into the kitchen. So I'm like, you know, I'm some army cook. I like to watch people cooking. I'm looking in the kitchen. Those cooks are blasting Metallica. It's like I'm watching them cook my food, and it's like a couple Metallica songs going. I see them cooking my chicken fried steak, inner salmon playing. Well, my food comes to me. It was the best chicken fried steak, I swear. Like, I could taste the Metallica in my food. I'm telling you. <laughs> But I live in Olympia, Washington now. Nobody knows about my past of being born and raised in Aberdeen. And so it's, it's all right. You know, I'm proud of where I come from. It is a little rough. But people will take a look at a guy that looks like me, and they'll be like, hey, man, you need to check your privilege, because not everyone's from a gated community. <laughs> and I'm always surprised. I'm like, how did you know I'm from the only gated trailer park in Aberdeen? You know? <laughs> It must have been able to smell it on me. I don't know. It's kind of ironic because it's the only other gated community in Aberdeen. Stafford Creek Penitentiary, it is. Yeah. You guys know when you kind of act it up in the grocery store as a kid, and instead of grabbing you by the hand on the way to the parking lot, they grab you by the arm, you know? You kind of knew you were a deep doo doo then. And then you know you're really messed up when he grabs you by the back of the neck. You're like, oh, please call the police, someone, something's coming, you know? My dad was more of like a straight in the back of the neck type of guy. You know what I'm saying? One day I had a really bad ear infection. He had to take work off. He wasn't happy. So he had to go. He had to take me to the ER. He grabbed me by the back of the neck. He reeled me in. And he was like, boy, if you're not actually hurt, you're going to be when I'm done. With you. I remember being like, I so hope I'm hurt. Oh, my God. And I can't wait. For him to be on his deathbed, guys. Because <laughs> I'm going to have to take work off. I'll be pissed. I'll have to grab him by the back of the neck, and I'll be like, Paul, if you're not actually hurt, you're going to be when I'm done with you. <laughs> That's me killing my dad. <laughs> that one more for practice. <laughs> so I was at the uh, Starbucks, and there was this just darling young Brad Pitt look-alike barista. And he hands me my cappuccino, all frothy and everything. And he says, 
you have a nice day, ma'am. And I said, my name is not ma'am. I'll have you know, I used to be a stripper named Bambi. <laughs> and he replied, well, then you have a nice day, dear. <laughs> okay, well, my husband and I uh, waited 12 years to have our first child and only child. And I just am here today to tell you how proud I am of him. Really proud of him. Uh, he's just recently graduated from college. Yay. Yeah, cost us $100,000, and I have a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that kid is so smart. He, he graduated with a 4.0 in applied mathematics. And um, you know, I am a college graduate also, um, but I, uh, I graduated with a 2.0, and I, um, I majored in alcoholism and plagiarism. Yeah. I don't think I'm his real mom. Um, I have some mom guilt. You know, when he was growing up, he was, you know, kind of a nerdy kid in school, so I dyed his hair blue. That's before it was popular, you know, these colors and everything. So the, he went to school and he told everybody that my mom used them to clean the toilet. <laughs> and coming up Wednesday, May 3rd, we have our first ever Ocean Shores stand-up comedy series here at Ocean Shores Cinemas starring Robert Petey and Jerry Minor. Jerry has been on HBO, A&E, and you've seen him on Comedy Central, and Robert Petey was voted Comedy Underground's Comedian of the Year. So come on down and get your tickets. They are selling fast. Our first show for 7 o'clock did sell out in a week and a half. There are a few tickets left for our 9 o'clock show. So come on down and get them before they're gone. Let's have a look at these two hilarious guys. I'm allergic to bees. Yeah. Bee stings me, I swell up and I die. Oh, that's funny. Thank you. That's nice. Sensitive group here. Wow, maybe after the show we can go out and kick a fat kid. How about that? Huh? Movies are a pretty good, safe conversation starter when you're out in public, you know, something general. Unless you run into that one guy, you know, he's so full of himself. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, hey, did you see The Hunger Games? <laughs> I read the book. <laughs> oh, thank you for pointing out my poor choices. <laughs> like, I don't read, you know what I mean? I read the book. Same guy comes up to me like two weeks ago. Hey man, you're a comedian. See that funny insurance commercial? I'm like, I read the policy. <laughs> it's interesting. I've been doing stand-up comedy for a while. I've done a lot of dumb things to be able to do this as a profession. Like, I used to work as a Lyft driver for a long time. My favorite thing that ever happened to me was one night, there was a woman that came out of a place called Q Nightclub. And she got in the car and said, I need to go to Q Nightclub. <laughs> and I told her, we're at Q Nightclub. And then she turned around and looked, got out of the car and said, thanks. <laughs> and then just walked back into Q Nightclub. It was such an awkward interaction. I didn't know whether it really happened or not. <laughs> until the next day when I got back my electronic report and sure enough, I had a ride. It lasted one minute long. We went zero miles. It cost her four dollars. And she left a two dollar tip for that minor amount of information. And it's really just sad because I know I'll never have a better customer than that. <laughs> as long as I work anywhere. Hi, this is Jerry Miner, and I want to invite you to a great night of comedy Wednesday, May 3rd at the Ocean Shore Cinema. It's me and my buddy Robert Pitty. We're doing two shows. First show is already sold out. Thank you. But there's still room in the second show. So I hear. The Ocean Shores people are great laughers. I'm looking forward to it. I have no idea. I've never been to Ocean Shores. It'll be my first time. Let's make it memorable. On this segment, I'm going to show you exactly how we get our movies. But first, got to talk about the past before we talk about the present. We're right here up in the, in the projection booth here at Ocean Shores Cinemas. And in front of me, I have the different types of media that we would get. 
Starting off, we get film. Back in the old days, we had 35 millimeter film. It's been the standard for many, many years until here recently. This is one reel of a movie. Most movies would come with anywhere between five and eight reels, sometimes more depending on the length of the movie. If you remember some of those old three hour movies, they would have at least nine reels that we had to put together to make one movie. What would generally happen is, and this is a trailer, this is a movie, you know, before the movie, and we would take the film, we have to find the, the beginning of it. Now this one just so happens to be at the end. So what we'd have to do is rewind it onto another reel, then put it back so it was facing forward. We would take these and we would use our splicing tape, which I just so happen to have some here, we haven't used it in years, and splice them together. Now we would take all of our commercials, all of our trailers, and all five to eight reels of the movie, splice them together to get one big movie that would go onto this big metal platter. We had three platters stacked up and it would play off of one, through the projector and onto the next one and ready for the next movie. It was very hot, it was long. There was nights where I would spend anywhere from four to eight hours, sometimes not even getting out until two o'clock in the morning to build the films. Now, once the film was built, we had to then add our cue tape. Everything, lights and the sound, everything ran off of this little silver film in the exact place you put it, told the projector what to do. Now, I'm glad that the digital days, we don't have to worry about that as much. But back in the day, that's what we used to have to do. I still remember my first day in the projection booth. I would beg my boss to tra train me how to do it. And he refused to do it until he dropped a movie that was three hours long. It was about as big as this platter is. He dropped it on the floor and we had to put it back together in time for showtime. It was a long two hour job with the two of us doing it. But I cut my teeth and learned how to do it. And I've been loving it ever since. So going to technology, moving up in technology, like you know, we said, everything came from the film. Now it was like this for many, many years and it was the standard for so long, but as everything else changes, so does movies. And we moved on to the digital age. Around 2009 is when we started seeing more of this digital stuff into the movies. We started getting digital cameras and some of the first projectors were starting to be developed. Now what we have is what we used to get our movies on when we went digital originally. So the theaters went digital roughly in around 2000, about nine to 13, depending on the product available. This theater here at Ocean Shore Cinemas, it was right around 2013 we went digital. And this is how we got our movies. They came on a hard drive, mailed to us in this little box. Now, you can see the difference of what we used to get, where we would get three to five of these cans with films in it. Now, one box with the movie in it. And it actually has several versions of the movie on it. We have our regular version. We have our open caption version. We also had multiple trailers and other commercials that would come with it. So these ones somewhere around about 275 gigs is what an average movie is. And this drive here holds, I believe, roughly about 500 gigabytes. So it would have multiple versions and extra you know, materials on there. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, it's digital. Can't I just copy it and get my own copy of the movie? You cannot. When these come to us, I can't even watch it. Basically, it's just a file that's encoded. Now, about a week before the movie comes out, I get an email from the studio with a key. Well, now that I have that key, I still can't watch it because it's time coded. So that key can only be used from certain dates. So usually about 24 hours before the movie opens until the end of our run of the movie, the key will be available. Sometimes like Mario, where we have a month long uh, running of the movie, it only lasts for two weeks and they send us a new key. And every couple of weeks they send us a new one to unlock it for a little bit further you know, along as the run goes along. Now someone says, well, how about I steal your movie and your key? Well, again, you can't watch the movie because those keys are then encoded to the projectors. So you would need all three of those things together in order to watch a movie on your own. And then even at that, it's only a couple of weeks before the key is no longer good. So for many years, like we've said, the film has been the main go-to standard of uh, film. And then it took about, I don't know, several decades to get to where we are digitally with the digital hard drives. Now, in less than 10 years since digital has been out, there's a whole new way of getting our movies, and that's through a digital download. With the infrastructure growing for the internet, our digital download is now available to where I don't even need the hard drives anymore. It is directly downloaded straight to our system. And just like that, within a few minutes, I can have a whole movie built and downloaded to all of my projectors in less time than it took for me to get to my car like I used to to go pick up movies in the old days. 
Now, the nice thing about the digital download is that once our movie is booked by our booking agent, within a day, sometimes two days, the movie is already downloaded into our system and all I have to do is transfer it from the system here, which we call our TMS, or theater management system. I add all the trailers, commercials, everything else we need, all the queuing like before, but it's all done digitally with a click of a mouse. Once that's all done, I take it from this system and I send it out to all three of our projectors. And within an hour, all three projectors have the movie ready to go and ready to play for when it's time for the movie to start. Things have become so much easier that now instead of taking me six to eight hours to build a film, it is now less than an hour to do all films throughout the whole theater for a whole week. I can also schedule all of our projectors here for the times when they start, end times, and everything right from this one computer. It makes it so much easier. The technology is great and everything is all networked and digitally and it's, it's so much easier than what it used to be. I no longer have to you know, hire somebody to sit here and do it all day long. It can be done before we open and we're ready to go. So technology is great in this aspect and it makes it so much easier. I can't wait to see where things go from here. Thank you for joining me this week on Let's Go to the Movies with Pat. Until next time, I'll see you at the movies.